I mean, I remember when I moved to Los Angeles in 1994, I bought a Motorola StarTac, and I was like, look at me. I got mm-hmm. a, I had a phone in 1989. Oh, wow. One of the big ones that went to a satellite? It was actually connected to my car oh, in okay. 1989, and it was very advantageous. My friend Bill Blumenreich, who owns uh, the – he owned the Comedy Connection. He owns the Wilbur Theater now in Boston, and I got a lot of gigs from him because – he could call me mm-hmm. when someone right. canceled. You had an advantage, someone yeah. got sick, and they said, "Hey, can yeah. you get the Dartmouth at you know 10 p.m.?" I'm like, "Yeah," and so I got gigs from that. Mm-hmm. We joke about it to this day that I was like the first guy that he knew that had a cell phone. It was very, it was a huge advantage. And I remember when I had one in '94, I was like, "This is great. I can call my friends. I don't even have to be home." There was so many positives to it. And it it gave you an advantage. It gave you an advantage. You you didn't have to be home. If there was a business thing that I had to deal with, there was something going on with my career, I could could deal with it on the phone at Starbucks or wherever I was. My fear is that this is going to be that times a million. It's going to be you have to have it in order to compete. Just like yeah. you ha- you kind of have to have an email today. Mm-hmm. You kind of have to have a cell phone today. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yes, we, we are certainly headed uh, headed in that way. And I think the word human is a very good word to put on the table here. Some things seem human or inhuman. And when you simply connect people, you know, Mark Zuckerberg sometimes says, how could it be wrong to give more people more voice? If you're simply connecting people and making it easier for them to contact each other, you know, I think that's mostly going to have good effects. And that happened with the telephone. You know, we all got telephones and we could do all sorts of things. We could coordinate with our friends. Telephones are great. Um, But when it became not technology making it easier for this guy to reach you or me to communicate with you, but rather um, it's a way... It's a way to put things out to try to gain prestige for me in front of thousands or maybe millions of people. Now it changes all of our incentives. It changes the game we're playing. You know, what games are we playing as we go about our day? And the more people are playing the game of I'm struggling to get influence in an influence economy where everyone else is on these seven platforms. So I have to be two or they have an advantage over me. Right. That is the way that things have been rewired already. Already we're there. Yeah. Now you're raising the possibility that the next step is more hardware-based, that yes. it's going into our bodies. And I think that is likely to happen. Um, and so I, I, you know, I, th- I hope what we'll do now, and I hope, I hope my book, The Anxious Generation, will sort of promote a, a, a pause. Let's think where we are. Let's think what we've done. Let's look at what has happened. When our kids got on phones and social media, we thought, oh, this could be amazing. Like, they can connect. They can form communities. It's going to be great. And now it's clear, no, it's been horrible. It's been really, really terrible. As soon as they got on, their mental health suffered. Um, you know, They might feel like they have a community, but it's much worse than what it replaces. So I think what we're seeing is the sort of the techno-optimists, the sort of the futurists who say, oh, it's going to be amazing. You know, We'll have Neuralink. We'll have all this technology. We'll be able to do everything. Like, Here's where we have to heed, I think, the warnings of the ancients, of religious authorities, of those who warn us that we are leaving our humanity and we're stepping into an unknown zone where so far the initial the initial verdict is horrible. So if we keep going without you know without putting on some brakes, yeah, I think we're going to a horrible place. Yeah, my fear is that it won't be horrible. Oh, it'll and, feel good. Yeah, yeah, that it'll be amazing. So th- my fear, my genuine fear, is the re- rewiring of the mind in a way that can enhance dopamine, enhance serotonin, yeah. and do things that can genuinely make you feel better. Yeah. And that in the short will, run, yes, and that we will decide that this is a better thing. 